Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the high grade Gundam Helios. And just like every single one of these kind of Gunpla reviews, this video would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you're ever looking for some Gunpla of your own, then there is a link down there in the description. Now here we go. So jumping right on into absolutely everything that comes inside of this box, and we've got the high grade Gundam Helios itself. A pair of alternate hands for using with the Palma Fiokina, but I will mention there is no effect parts for using with those inside of this box. As for the actual effect parts we do have, we've got two beams for using with the large beam swords, and one for using as a beam shield. And the last thing we've got in here then, is the beam rifle. This right here is what the high grade Gundam Helios looks like out of the box snapped together with a little bit of panel lining and all of the stickers used. And before we talk about the aesthetics, let's talk a little bit about the build. The high grade Gundam Helios right here builds up like your typical high grade kit. But I will mention that it is made up predominantly out of two particular Gundams, has some aspects inherited from an additional two Gundams, and then four runners that are labeled Gundam Helios that are new to this kit. As from the parts which have been reused from older kits, we've got a few runners from the absolutely amazing high grade Destiny from 2019, and a whole bunch of runners from the very, very good High Grade Freedom Gundam from 2015. And I will mention if you want to see reviews of either of those kits, they're on here. As for the additional elements, this has taken a couple of design elements from, but does not use any runners from. We've got the Gundam F91, and that is the fold out panels we have inside of the arms and the legs, which are just like the ones on the shoulders of the F91. And according to the instructions, this has some psycho frame from the Unicorn Gundam, but I think that is just done with these foil stickers in this kit. There is a lot of stickers, I did use them all, and none of which are all that bad, really. They're mainly just shiny green ones. So yeah, once you've got this kit built, this is pretty much what you get right here. This, I have to say, is one gorgeous looking Gundam. I love the color scheme, and I thought I wouldn't like the inverted freedom wings, but once you get them spread out, they do look pretty cool. When it comes to the color accuracy on this, we do have some stickers, like I mentioned, that is a lot of the foil green ones, which are mainly all around the wings. We've got some gray ones then on the ankles, which do, well, stand out a little bit. And then the usual ones for the eyes and the head camera. Just taking a quick look at the instructions here, and I can see there is a couple of aspects that aren't fully color accurate on this, including the inside of the satellite cannons, as well as these little piston type segments down on the feet, but these are very easy to correct with something like Gundam markers or a little bit of paint. So jump in right into that full 360 degree spin and there it is from absolutely every angle so you can check it out for yourself in case there's something you want to know about this model kit that I did not mention. I have to say this is a very very nice high grade. It has inherited a lot of good aspects from a couple of really really good kits and the way they've rearranged the color scheme is very nice on the eyes. I did pan line this to bring out some of the detail using the poor style grey Gundam marker. But besides that, this is pretty much exactly what it looks like out of the box of the stickers. The Gundam Helios has a very powerful silhouette, mainly reinforced by some huge chunky parts like the shoulders and the segments on the back of the arms and the side of the calves. All that then is finished off very nicely by those big old wings and I have to say, this design impresses me quite a bit. But anyway, let's get right on in to the accessories. So jumping back now to the full array of accessories that this kit comes with, now let's check them all out one by one. So I will mention at this point, the stand does not come with Gundam Helios, I'm just using that because this kit is quite back heavy. It doesn't mean that you can't actually stand it up without a stand, it just means that it's kind of difficult to do the review with him constantly wanting to tip backwards. Also, I like the dynamicness of having everything orientated out to the back like that, instead of trying to bring it all forward just to maintain some balance. So stand, not included but recommend it. So first off, taking a look at the hands, and these are the hands I've had attached for the majority of the review. These are just a standard set of holding hands. As far as I know, these are from the Destiny Gundam. Actually, I can check that. Yes, these are in fact from the Destiny Gundam, and I'll mention there's a lot of leftover parts. We've got a whole bunch off this runner from Destiny, some feet and waist parts in white, but they're from Freedom. We've got two of these B1 runners, which came from Freedom as well, so we've got a whole load of armor off the legs. The shoulders, we've even got a full beam saber handle on this. Some of the arms. This is also from Freedom, some of the backpack. Looks like some of the knees, some of the shield. 
and also some of the chest which I cut out by accident while building this. So if you like scratch building and having some extra parts for playing around with, then you most certainly can do that. And as far as I can see, you can actually build some extra armor you can actually play around with on the Helios here. But I digress, we've got a pair of fist-like holding hands with the standard holding hold, so this can hold Destiny's weapons, because these are Destiny's hands, with a different back. And we also have the widespread dynamic hands from the Destiny Gunnam, which have the hole for the Palma Fiocina in the palm. But we do not get the effect parts that we did get with the high-grade Destiny, the new high-grade Destiny, that is. These, of course, used with the satellite cannons up top and the giant wing weapons of the Freedom. These can be outstretched like so and used with the satellite cannons up top and the plasma beam cannons from the Freedom's wings to pose the Helios Gundam doing the Helios Sestet Cannon. So next up in here we've got Destiny Gundam's beam rifle. So this is exactly the same as what we would have seen before. So that does mean we have a moving side up top and a moving handle down bottom. Attaching this on is the usual sandwich hand routine. That means you pop the handle into the gray finger segment, slap the back on just like so, and then it attaches on in the usual ball joint attachment kind of way, and that right there is what it looks like attached. When this is not in use, we do have a little tab always sticking out the side that you can attach into the butt flap like so for storage. So the next weapons we have in here are the pair of beam swords. So they are stored up here on the satellite cannons, can be pulled out like so. And we have two of those. We've got some mighty vigorous effect parts. These attach into the same holding hands that we used before. Just pop on the back of the hand like so. Popping off the Palma Fiocina right there. And there is the second one. Now these are a very vigorous pair of weapons. These look really, really good. The beams for this did come on the A runner, which is exclusive to the Helio. So these are not made out of the usual soft beam saber material. This is a more hard, clear effect, which I think always looks and feels a little better and is less likely to warp over time. So the last accessory that we have in here is the beam shield. Now this is tiny and a little bit hard to get on, mainly because you have to remove this little bit of a shield generator from the rear of the forearm, which can be a little hard to get off. But once it's off, you attach it on like so. And this is both beautiful and hilarious at the same time. This is the smallest little beam shield I have ever seen. But even though while I say that, it catches the light in the perfect, beautiful kind of way, just like the beam effects we got with the beam swords. And according to the instructions, it can also be used for attacks. So I'm going to do something now I've been mean to do for the whole review that I'm really curious about myself, and that is, what will the wings look like if they are the right way around? Because something tells me it will look like a whole neater mobile suit with them the right way. Let's see. They swing around like that, you don't even have to take them off. This has the normal backpack adapter, in case you are curious about that, so swappable with most high-grade kits. And there we go. That right there is the Helios Gundam with the Freedom Wings the right way around, just in case you wanted to see that. I'll open them up as well, why not? There we go, there they are opened up, so it looks a lot more freedom-y now, and honestly, I think it takes away from the charm of this kit. Surprisingly enough, I think I prefer them inverted. So now jumping into the articulation and we're going to be working from the head down as usual. And first off I will mention that I am mildly disappointed, mildly, that this doesn't have more of the destiny in its build. So it doesn't have the kick-ass articulation we would have seen with that particular kit. That I'm guessing is to maintain general compatibility with other high-grade kits. For example, the Destiny had ball joints that came out of its shoulders, which isn't really compatible with most kits. Whereas this line, of course, being part of Gundam Breaker, means they're trying to keep them as compatible and interswappable as possible. So they went with this standard high grade shoulder polycaps. The neck on the Helios here is the standard giggity 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 goo polycap. That's a ball joint up top and a ball joint down bottom, which will give you pretty much everything you could ask for. Like I mentioned, standard shoulder polycaps, these are aligned to move forward and back, which is like this right here. So that does mean we have the ball joint shoulder roll. There is the arm all the way up, maybe a little more. There are two points of rotation on this arm for your posing pleasure, but the bottom one likes to pop off sometimes, get loose real easy. So support that while you do your twisting. There is the bend at the elbow, very nice. Inside the blue section on the rear of the forearm, we've got two of those 
green little fin panel segments that can both flip out just like so, and the wrist is a standard ball joint. So I've found the weakest aspect of this kit to be the waist. I find if I ever just move it around a little bit, it just eventually ends up popping or flopping at that particular ball joint. So this is the old school double ball joint routine. So that means you've got a ball joint there, which gives you a little bit of articulation. Then you throw that up there and that gives you another little bit of articulation, but they both together don't really give you all that much. So you can tilt it and hope for the best but there isn't really anything in the lines of an ab crunch here at all. And when you do crunch it, it tends to fall backwards instantly. So this is mainly just there to give you a bit of rotation. And that's all I can kind of get out of it. Standard ball joints on the skirting armor can flip up like so. Rear skirting can move up and down like this. And we do have some extra joints that can move it back and forward. But these are from the rail guns on the Freedom. So that means this doesn't actually go anywhere. The butt flap back here, that is locked in place. There is no moving mechanism inside of the hips, which is also a little bit of a letdown, especially because it seemed like when it was being built, there should be one. Like this should drop down, but it doesn't seem to. As for the kicks anyway, there's the kick all the way to the front. So about parallel to the ground, out to the back is quite limited. And can we get those splits? Yes, we most certainly can. Next up then is full rotation at the upper leg, but of course because of that armor lip that does mean that does not work when in close like this. Next up as for the bend at the elbow, it's double jointed and bends to that right there. Next up we've got one of those blue segments that opens up again and inside of here we've got two of those clear greeny blue segments. So lastly then on to the functional movement of the foot, there it is all the way to the front. There we go all the way to the back, that is nice. And then there's that side to side tilt, also very, very nice. And finally, we do have a bend downwards at the toe, but it looks somewhat awkward. Next up then, around in the back, we've got the satellite cannons. They can rotate on this axis right here. We've got a swingy bit right here, another hinge up here. And these can pivot side to side like so to pick up on a target. They can extend outwards just like so. And let's get the other one up over the shoulder, extend it out. And there we go. As for the wings, we've been seeing these moving quite a bit during the review, so they can rotate at that point. Flip in and out right here, all the way to the back like so. These wings move in panels, so we've got these two attached together right here. These two back here are attached together. The cannon can move attached between both of these, and this one does not move at all. In order to get that Helios sextet cannons working this can flip out like so under the arms make sure that's locked in correctly why are you so floppy do that a bit of a squeeze there and there we go so those and this one and the palma fiochinas are ready to unleash some death so the articulation with the Helios Gundam is a mixed bag, but overall is quite good. I would forgive the lack of an ab crunch if it was an actual stable joint, but this tends to loosen up quite a bit, and I think it's the way the torso attaches together. The hips are a little bit limited too, which means you can't raise the knee up too high, but on the whole, besides that, we do have some great articulation, but it is a little bit loose out of box. So anyway, that right there is it for my review of the high-grade Helios Gundam. And this is my second time doing this because the last time I gave it silver tier and I felt like that wasn't quite right. So I played around with it a little bit just to kind of get a better feel of it. So the reason I was going to give it silver tier was because of its issues with falling apart here and there. But I always forget that Kits are more likely to fall apart during a review than they are in general because of everything you're doing with them and my arms are completely outstretched. So, let's talk about this and see where we get. Aesthetically, this is an absolutely gorgeous kit. It does have some stickers, but they're just for the shiny green segments. Even if you left them off, you probably wouldn't even notice. They're mainly on the wings. When it comes to the actual design, this does look phenomenal and is absolutely eye-catching with clear parts nice panel lines, and some of the coolest aspects from two of the coolest mobile suits around, the Destiny and the Freedom. When it comes to the accessories in here, we've got anything you would ever want, a beam rifle, a beam shield, and two of the coolest beam swords around. These are really nice with great vigorous effects. A little bit of a letdown is the fact that we've got the Palma Fiocchina hands in here, but no effect parts for using with them that we did get with the Destiny. Finally then when it comes to the articulation, it is all around extremely, extremely good with a little bit of a couple of areas that lack a little bit, which 
stand out a lot compared to the rest because everything else is so fluid. That of course is the ab crunch which doesn't have a whole lot going on and can't really support the wings too well and the hips which don't have a dropping mechanism to allow for higher kicks in the legs. But besides that, solid articulation and it looks fantastic in poses. That is why I've decided to re-record this and give this kit gold tier just like its brother from the exact same series, the Live Lance Heaven. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Thanks once again to Hobby Link Japan for providing this for the review. If you want one of your own, there will be a link down there in the description. And of course, I will see you next time. As always, all my thanks to each and every one of you guys for making this channel possible, including those who support me over on the channel memberships and on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Sean T. Van Fon, Global Frequency Studios, Lawrence Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, and Forsetti.